That was from Nishino. Cheers. <laughs> and I'm here in Tokyo. We actually met up in Tokyo as promised um, on the Ramen in Japan podcast. I'm here with the owners of Neighborhood Ramen and uh, we just had like some incredible bowls. Um, I got a nice summer gente bowl at Nishino and you had the regular bowls at uh, that is um, maybe you can say a couple of words what um, the main bowl is all about. Yeah, so it was uh, like a lighter, um, like a lighter soup with some more like subtle, like nuanced flavors. And then I got the pork wontons, and then she got both shrimp and pork wontons. So yes, it was, uh, the shio shio ramen, nice and light, um, clean, very clean. Um, I had the shrimp and pork wontons. I really like the shrimp wontons. Yeah, very good. I'm a very uh, nice light bowl for. A super hot day. <laughs> yeah. And because it's a really hot day, I, I felt compelled to uh, try their cold bowl. And I'm usually not the biggest fan of cold bowls, but I gotta say, this one was probably the first one that has ever convinced me. Um, they serve it as a combo sweet skimmen with uh, very thin noodles, but they have a nice firm snappiness to them. Not too much, just, just right. And served together with a... Um, I would say a light chicken and um, with a, a, a niboshi tare. So they have like extra tare on the on the counter that you can then add later, and which had a little bit of a yeah, it was uh, nice. niboshi tingle yeah. to it, yeah. uh, which was quite surprising. But the bowl itself, um, the, 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 the soup itself, the dipping soup uh, was quite light. It had like a lot of sudachi in there, that uh, kind of Japanese citrus fruit, fruit I guess, uh, that you can add, eat whole actually. And then, then um, you, with the bowl, uh, you get actually a uh, instruction sheet that tells you how to eat those. Uh, first, they try to tell you to just eat the noodles as they are in uh, the kombu sui, the kombu water, so to say, which isn't slimy, by the way, just uh, pure kombu flavor and um, yeah, uh, as a flavor enhance and works as a flavor enhancer. Um, then they tell you to add a little bit of the salt that they have there. I thought there was like a little bit of smokiness in there, so I'm not sure if it's smoked salt. Um, then they tell you to dip it. Then um, what was the next one? To uh, add a little bit more tare. And at the end you can ask uh, the staff for soup vadi and they bring out a kombu dashi so you can actually uh, fill up this, the, the broth, the soup. Uh, to make a little bit more drinkable and then you just finish the whole soup because that's what you really want to do because it's really ex excellent it because it was light it was still like a chickeny fragrant uh rich in flavor uh like citrusy 
I think it was a little bit all over the place, but just so good for for um, for this temperature. The wontons were super nice. They come on the side. I had to get them really plump, nice filled. Um, yeah, Nishino, one of the uh, Namen Koike uh, group shops. So you you find a lot of like similarities to other ramen koike shops, um, but definitely yeah, one of those uh, shops that I think they have been in and out of the Tabulok top 100 ramen shops as well. Um, they were uh, part of the Michelin Bib Gourmand uh, list for a while. So yeah, that shop is definitely up there and for a good reason. And uh, yeah, I think that's all from us for now. If you want to hear us talk a little bit more about ramen, then listen in to episode number, it should be number 21 of the Ramen in Japan podcast, uh, where we then talk a little bit about their ramen shop in Philly in the States and about many, many other ramen shops that they have been to and that I've been to in the last couple of days and weeks. That's all from us for today. See you guys in the next one.